Galatians 6.10 says, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. And if you go back a verse, in verse 9, Paul says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We discussed that last week. And in, in verse 9, Paul affirms our spiritual harvest, and he encourages believers to press on. Right? In due season we shall reap if we faint not. And now he connects the reality of that future spiritual harvest to our lives today. Right? So in between verse 9 and 10, there's the connection there, and Paul brings the next logical step in. And for just a couple of minutes today, I want to show you that because of the reality of that future spiritual harvest, believers must faithfully fulfill their ministry today. The Christian life is one of service. That's what Paul has argued in the back half of Galatians. In fact, if you go back to chapter 5 and verse 13, he says, Brothers, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty as an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Our life is meant to be used to serve others. And our spirit-filled identity in Christ is geared toward loving and serving others for their good and for God's glory. This is our divinely given opportunity to fulfill the law of Christ. And you can see that in chapter 6 and verse 2. This is true freedom for service in the moment of opportunity. We have the call to faithfully fulfill our God-given ministry. And this call has a dual focus, and we see that in verse 10. He says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. So there's a universal call for us to do good to all men, but there's also a specific call. He says, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Brown, in the Geneva Commentary series, states, Every poor and distressed man had a claim on me for pity. But a poor Christian has a far stronger claim on my feelings my labors, and my property. He's my brother, equally interested as myself in the blood and love of the Redeemer. I expect to spend an eternity with him in heaven. He is the representative of my unseen Savior, and he considers everything done to his poor afflicted as done to himself. Right, I'm reminded, and you can look at it on your, on your own time, but if you look back in Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 and 42, Christ talks about giving a cool water a cup of cool water to our neighbor in his name. This idea of doing good, right? He says, let us do good. So what is that? Well, I think it's a wide ranging host of opportunities, spiritual, emotional, physical. And it may look like taking an elderly member of your congregation to the doctor. Maybe they can't drive themselves and you offer to take them. Maybe it's helping clean up debris from a hurricane. We've taken a couple of trips from our church over to Lake Charles in Sulphur, Louisiana. We've been doing some work over there helping to clean up from the hurricane, both for people who are inside of local churches and people who are unsaved and outside of the community of faith. Why? Because we want to embrace the aspects of this call to do good. Maybe it's something as simple as sending a text and telling your friend that you have prayed for them and you love them. Whatever your ministry is, Faithfully engage in the call to do good today for the good of others and for the glory of Christ. Thank you so much for watching today. Have a great rest of your week and God bless.